Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne Barrett Justice, and in today's video, we're going to do a portrait. In fact, it's a double portrait. It's a husband and a wife, and this is a client of mine out of California that um, I've done her dog's portraits for her, and so now she's trusting me to do she and her husband. So, in this video, I will cover a little bit about doing using the Zorn palette and the other colors and paints that I mix into it. I, you know, I'm not always strictly a going by the Zorn kind of girl, but. I do add some other colors to my palette as well. Um, I will, you know, you'll, this, this painting actually took quite a few months, uh, mainly because I get off of it and get on it and get off of it and get on it. But yeah, that's what this is about. And if you stick to the end, you're gonna also see how I finish painting up and even put the varnish, the final varnish on the piece. So stay to the end and watch this video. And thank you so much for joining me. And if you are my subscribers, thank you so much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. And if you like this sort of thing, but in a uh, longer real-time painting tutorial, be sure to check out my Patreon channel as well. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this double portrait. The Zorn palette in a nutshell. Basically, you have ivory black, titanium white, yellow ochre, and cadmium red. Now, I just had some flesh tone. That's uh, Gamblin's flesh tone off to the side because oftentimes I will start a portrait with the Zorn palette, except I'm always adding. I need a cool red, so I often will have alizarin crimson or one of the critical downs or something like that. But Anyhow, I'm gonna just show you how I start mine. Mine's very basic. Obviously, you can always make this so much more extensive by adding, you know, more white to your grays and make, you know, or having just different tints and different, um, you know, there's just so much more that you can do. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now, I'm gonna use my really nasty, ugly, um, knife because I am not one of those neat artists. So what I usually start off with is I'll have several varying grays. So I'm gonna start off just by taking a little bit of white here, a little bit of white here, like this. And I actually squirted this paint out last night. So, um, grab a little bit of this and I, I'm very messy. So I'll have a gray. And then I'm gonna have another gray. So I'll have varying degrees of gray, if that makes sense. You can see these are all just a little bit gray. One's a little less gray than the other. And I wish that it had a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so I might start off like this. Then I'm going to take some of my yellow ochre oops, and some of my cad red and make an orange, kind of this orangey color here. Obviously I'm gonna use a lot more of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bit more. Now there's a lot, you know, there's all kinds of videos on YouTube and on Patreon that you can look at that will show you a much neater uh, application of this, um, of the Zorn palette. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just not a neat person. <laughs> so there you have it. So I'm just gonna move some of this color down and clean off my palette. And I'm going to make my first tint of this color. That's just basically adding white. I need it to be whiter than that. So there's a tint. Then I'm going to make, to 
take some of the gray and I'm making a tone and so on. And then I'm going to make a darker tone. Then I'm going to make a shade. Of course, by definition, a shade is any color with black added. A tone is any color with gray added. And a tint is any color with white added. Okay, so you can see I have my color, my first tint, my first shade, my second shade, and a, I'm sorry, let me start over again. I have my color, my first tint, my first tone, my second tone, and a shade. And I'm gonna continue that throughout all the colors, okay? So this is what, this is what, um, this is how I do a Zorn palette. So I'm going to go ahead and expedite this just a tad. Okay, let's talk about what I just did here, <laughs> other than make a big giant mess. Basically what I had was a different um, array of different grays made by titanium white and ivory black. But if you understand color theory, you can borrow from one and, and the other and actually mix them directly. But the easiest way is to have enough volume of gray, different grays made up so that you can mix your tones, okay? So what you see here is the combination, this is my orange color made by the yellow ochre and cadmium red. And then with that color, I mixed my first tint, my first tone, my second tone, and a shade. And then I did the same with just yellow ochre. This is a yellow ochre tint, a yellow ochre um, tone, the second tone, and the shade. And then I took cadmium red light, I guess this is really cadmium medium, with um, white, made my first tint, I have my two tones, my first tone and second tone, and then I have my shade. Now I can do almost an entire palette by, I mean, um, portrait using these. I mean, Zorn did it and lots of great artists have done this. And just because this is what I made, doesn't mean you can't have three different, four different, infinite amount of tints, right? So you can take this color and tint it, meaning add more white and have your lightest, you know, the lightest, lightest color. Same here. Or say you have this color, it's a little too orange for you. Maybe you need it to have, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit more of a pinky cast. The amount that you use of yellow ochre or cadmium red, you might lean more towards the red and have, uh, you know, you could just take a little bit more red, add it in here, right? And have more of a flesh tone that you're happy with. Um, grab me a little bit of white, you know, so you can see you can have so many different degrees of a color. So this is just a basic concept of what the Zorn palette is. Like I said, there are so many other videos out there that are way better than this particular demonstration for what a Zorn palette is. I encourage you to look at those because that's really, especially for a beginning painter, it's the easiest way to mix a, a portrait palette. Now, I told you initially that I put down this flesh tone because I was putting down my palette for the painting that I'm getting ready to work on. And this is just a basic, like I'll probably take some of these paints and use them in the portrait. And it's oftentimes that I start off with these, <clears throat> these different shades to do the very initial part of this portrait. And depending on how much pink or yellow is in someone's skin is going to dictate whether I'm using the yellow ochre shade or the cadmium red shade. And I'm here to tell you, I'll be using more of this palette right here. There's not as much yellows in these particular people's um, flesh colors. So I probably won't use that much of this. I mean, maybe for um, 
my um, subject's hair. I have one, one of the people in this particular portrait has blonde hair. So I might use this, you know. Um, and you're gonna see that when I actually put out my palette for this particular painting, you know, I'm gonna have chromium oxide, which you could kind of get a lot of the greens by mixing your yellow ochre and your um, ivory black, but maybe it's not the greens that I want for this portrait. Again, this is really basic. This is a great way to start out a piece and you could do so many different variations of it. But this is just, just for demonstration purposes, this is how I might start off a portrait painting. Okay, you can see the folks there on the right of the screen. Um, this is Bettina and her husband. These are clients of mine out of California. <clears throat> I had done uh, several paintings for Bettina in the past of their dogs. And so she asked me to do the portrait of she and her husband. So I'm just going to go ahead, very loosely start laying down some color. Bettina's got a lot of pinks in her skin. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't necessarily always just jump in with the Zorn palette and uh, only use those colors. I will use, I always like to have a little bit of a cool red all as well. So I'm just kind of putting a little down, a lizard and crimson down too. And, uh, just to give me a little bit of something, something here. So I'm using a lot of the the flesh tones that I made initially with the cadmium red and yellow ochre. And I'm actually mixing a little bit of lizard and crimson in it. And I am a, I am very, I'm very sketchy at first when I start off a piece. I'm using the, the shade and um, and I do wipe my brush off a lot. Sorry there, singer. <laughs> it's okay, it was me bumping my arm. My guard dog, he is awesome. And I'm going to bring this color down a little bit here. Okay, big shot. Singer, it's fine. Okay, big boy. Oh yes, my dog has found his voice. Since I know you don't wanna hear my dog bark anymore, let's go ahead and expedite this a little bit. So of course I'm sitting down a lot of dark values, of course under her neck area, and I'm just blocking her in. You can see there's no blending happening right now. And it's just blocks and blocks of color, almost as if you're chiseling her out of, you know, stone or something. It's it's almost like I'm a, a sculptor, if you will. So I'm just laying down blocks and blocks of color. And I wanna do it while I have that wet background so I can have soft edges. And uh, so you'll see, there's a lot of tweaking that happens. And um, this, so this kind of looks scary when you first start them out. But yeah, that's how this works for me. I just kind of block it in and tweak along as I go. And since I am right-handed, um, I generally start from left to right. So yeah, it seems like I'm spending a whole lot of time on, uh, on Patina here and haven't quite gotten to her husband, but I'm on, I'm on it. So I'm blocking him in two, and I am you uh, having a ball with his pink shirt. Um, you can see that I'm, you know, I'm just, we'll usually start off with three values and temperatures of the color. So I had the mid-tone, and then I went in with the darker, cooler color, 
and um, yet even another darker, cooler color. Actually, there's three colors here that I'm using, but it's all basically the same. And so here I am blocking him in, and same process. You know, I I'm, I'm know the edges and the sides have to be a little bit darker, and I do want them to blend, so I will, you know, keep um, adding more of the background color so that I can have that nice soft edge um, but again, this is just the blocking in stage. So I'm putting in my dark values and, and getting all the shapes in. So once I was satisfied with, um, with him, I jumped back over on her and start adding more and more. And you can see she's starting to have a little bit more shape. You know, things are starting to make a little bit more sense. <clears throat> her features are becoming more prominent. So you can actually see that she does have an eye there and it's, it's coming into focus. Uh, the palette that I'm using, I know I squirted out the original palette onto a disposable palette uh, with the Zorn, creating the Zorn palette, but I have switched over to a, uh, my um, other palette just so that I can work closely right up on the painting. I, I like to do that. And so I'm using a soft brush here. That is an Eclipse Filbert that's, you know, it's softer than an ivory, <clears throat> almost as soft as a sable. And I'm able to do a lot of blending with those brushes. <clears throat> so I'm getting in some of his detail here around the eyes and I'm just really, um, you know, taking a look. I take a step back, I look at my um, reference material, my reference photos, and uh, so you can see how dark it is on that one side of his face. And I'll go ahead and wet that, wet that side so I can get, you know, the, the background color so I can keep that soft edge. And what I'm using to blend that edge, if you if you looked, I probably was using a sable. I do like to use sable hair brushes when I'm doing portrait work, but um, mainly for just the blending aspect. I don't do a whole lot of application with a uh, with a sable. And he's coming together. He's starting to actually take form here. creating the little folds in his eyes without getting too crazy here. And then I'm adding the highlights to his skin on his forehead. So, and then blending it in with a soft brush. Um, in this case, it was a, uh, that's an Eclipse brush. Putting in some dark values on the side. Again, I keep going back and forth between my dark and cool values. And you can see that's a little sable that I'm working with. I'm able to blend those little edges and, and create a more uh, smooth transition from the different um, values and temperatures of color that I'm using. And you can see here, I'm actually raising his forehead up a little bit. And, uh, you know, I do um, adjust as I go along in, a, in any painting. And so I'm laying his hair down and, and uh, just getting in you know, the the aspects here so there is some adjustments that are occurring and again painting that making sure I have a wet background to paint into to keep everything soft where it needs to be soft and I'm highlighting hair where it needs to be highlighted just like that Of course, with a man's lips, you don't have lipstick, but you have to make that soft transition. And of course, I'm having a ball, as always, enjoying the ride. Now, I'm back on the lips, and I want to keep them smooth, so I'm, I'm putting a little bit more of the flesh tone back in, and you know, I want to have the, the creases where they need to go. And I have to really pay very close mind to my photo reference up here. I gotta make sure everything, you know, not everything is uh, symmetrical, not everything is even. So you can't just make assumptions that a mouth should be a certain way. You know, it might be bigger on one side and a little quirkier on the other side. All that kind of stuff has to factor into any type of portrait. That's why you're painting the individual. Now I'm putting a lot of the cool values on this one side of the face. And uh, you know, here we go. I've, I've pretty much finished it up. I'm very much, uh, you know, digging it. My client has already uh, signed off on the piece. She's very excited to receive it. So uh, the only thing left now is to sign it and to varnish it, and I'll be able to ship this baby off to California. 
once my painting is dry and it's it's been a week since I've worked on it and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Now, I, I've obviously not signed it yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and varnish it now. And what I'm using is, I'm just gonna use a really soft brush. Um, happen to be using my 279 series, works great. Um, and I'm using Gamvar. Now this is a product I use quite a bit and I'm not gonna tip it up <laughs> to show you because I'll end up pouring it all out. But what I just do is just, is just uh, I just pour some on there. And then sometimes I actually just let the let it run a little bit, but I just work my way out from the uh, center and just go ahead and get my varnish on there. Now some pieces I you know it depends. I don't want I don't want to say that I varnish every piece that I do, but if I want a consistent um, finish. Uh, I will varnish. Now in this piece, I did do a little bit of color correction with the uh, Galkid, which gives the, um, some areas are a little shinier than others. And so this is just going to keep me with a consistent um, finish on the whole piece. So I'll just keep working it out. And sometimes I go back over, sometimes I'll pour more on. I'd rather do like a couple thin layers than to do one heavy layer. And uh, sorry, I'm, it's probably getting in the way here, but I'll just go ahead and move it around. You could use a sponge brush, you know, the cheap sponge brushes you can get at any uh, hardware store or craft store. They work nicely too, but I, I find that they absorb a little bit too much of the Gambar, and uh, for that, I just I just use a brush, because it's what I have. Um, and I'll just let it dry like this for a while. And I know that my client, who has seen it online, is already thrilled and is anxiously waiting her piece to be delivered. So I will let this, this Gambar, this varnish, you know, cure for a while. For me, after I just let it dry um, in this position for a while, I'll check to see if I need to do another coat. Usually I don't have to, but sometimes I do. And if it's everything is, is looking good, then I should be able to ship it out next week. But I'm just making sure everything's covered. I'm just hitting it. So obviously I didn't even have to pour more on. I was able to get my full coverage. Oops, sorry. <laughs> my head keeps hitting everything, but there we go. Yeah, usually, you know, I don't have an opportunity to do an overhead shot like this, and I wish I could always do this with my paintings, but that doesn't always happen for me because I don't have, I can't, I can't paint flat like this. So maybe one day I'll figure it out and get a better system. My son just uh, <laughs> informed me that it's Amazon Prime Day. So perhaps I should just go on and uh, order something on Amazon Prime to help me be a better YouTuber and better Patreon person. But there we have it. So now that's varnished and it will set. And well, every now and then you'll see that it separates just a little bit. And I'll just go back over and and that's just because it's, you know, it's dry, but it's, it's just for some reason, just isn't quite hitting it there. So I may end up having to do another coat in some places. I just keep reworking the, the varnish a little bit here. There we go. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. And I will sign it. Now I'll probably sign it right here, or I may sign it over here. Let's see. That's usually where I sign my pieces. Now, this was something my client, this was a photograph, I guess, she and her husband had taken at some event. And I think that that was, so I kind of just copied, obviously, what she had. Um, went with the same kind of gray background because I thought it was somewhat neutral. He had this bright, beautiful pink shirt on. So there we go. Now it's varnished.
Okay, so there we are. Um, finished this piece up. And like I said, this, this painting probably took over a course of several months to do. And it wasn't that it took me that long. It's just that I put it away and take it back out and take it, you know, come and paint on it. In the meantime, I've probably painted 10 other pieces. So yeah, that's, that's kind of me and, and portrait work. But I like to live with a piece for a little while just so I can see where my errors are, where refinement needs to take place. And with human portraits, I mean, for me, it's a challenge. I'm more of an animal girl, but I do enjoy doing portraits uh, as well. So there you have it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you, here's the completed piece. And I'm also gonna show you, you know, the side-by-side -side of the photo reference that I worked from. So you can see, I mean, with the photo reference, I try to stick to what uh, my client wanted. You know, she liked that particular day where they were. I think they were at a little party. The, so I stuck with the gray background that she wanted. I mean, these, so when you're dealing with a client, you gotta give them what they're asking for. You gotta listen to them. And if you need to you know, steer them in a different direction, you can try, but know that they have in their mind a vision of what they want their painting to look like. And it's my job as an artist to get in their mind and figure that out for them and help you know, work so that we're always on the same page. So thanks for joining me today. And I'm so glad you're here. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please, please leave them in the comments section. I'm really quick to answer any comments. And uh, if you are my subscribers, of course, thank you as always. I so appreciate you guys. And if you're not my subscriber, why not? Go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell so you'll know when the next video comes out. And uh, yeah, if you like this sort of thing too and you wanna see a, a more in-depth video, please check out my Patreon channel. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And from Kingsport, Tennessee, I'll see you. bye.